I get to tell you about this photo because this time um, it is not a um, a city park photo, and it has no <laughs> green on it. <laughs> I still put green on my, on my palette just in case. There might be a reason <laughs> for it. I might be addicted. This here was a place we stayed in in Missouri. And there had been a late storm that had been off on the horizon that didn't actually hit where we were. And it had a really crazy kind of um, warm summer sunset. So I knew that I wanted to paint it as soon as I saw it. And then you posted a few days ago a sunset, which is a little unlike your other posts as of late. And I thought, oh, perfect opportunity to make Steve uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm glad I got one warm up in before you did it. Good. Yeah, yeah so I'm, uh, yeah. so Go ahead. you. you you're painting on like it looks like a reddish brown uh, covered paper, and I have like a very bright orange pink um, primed wood panel. That's just for notes in case people are wondering. <laughs> yeah, it can be hard to tell. Yeah. What size are you working? Um, I've got a nine by nine taped down, so um, okay. three quarter inch. Yeah, about about seven and a half. Okay. And what are you doing? Is that looks like a six by six? Six by six again. <laughs> yep. I went um, a little bit larger in some of the more recent uh, videos I've shot. And mm -hmm. I was able to finish them, and I looked at this one today, and I thought, I'm going to put way too much paint on a larger painting, and I should probably try to control myself just a little. Some self-restraint there. It's good. Just a little. Hey, you started the NOLA Plein Air group? Yeah. Yeah, we've New just Orleans, finally got that going off. And you need to tell me all about it. <laughs> yeah, um, so it was something I thought of like a year ago, but you know how that market like sucks your soul and all the time out of your life? Um, <laughs> yes, I, I, I do know. <laughs> yeah, so that has been one good thing that's come out of this whole crazy year is that I finally had some time to do, to do some other stuff. And so I finally got that off the ground. Um, my good friend Spencer is helping me to do that. So we're kind of like uh, managing that. And I mean, it's been a wonderful, easy experience so far. Um, everybody wants to get out of the house. Imagine yeah. that. And, and um, you know, and chat a bit with people who like doing the same thing. So it's been great. You get to now, meet a few new people every time. Good. Spencer is the guy who does the Procreate. He's like a digital yeah or, or, or am i thinking of somebody else no that's spencer um he is he's painting in photoshop with a wacom tab tablet okay. um, for some of them and and a, a good half of them is um either gouache or acrylic but um yeah spencer and i go way back we were uh we were assigned freshman roommates in art school so i've known spencer for a good 12 or so years really yeah 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 we both uh we majored in the same Thing. we did um like biz dev digital media stuff so uh okay. concept art related stuff um but yeah both found our way out here nice so where have you uh met so far in order to do these paintings yeah uh as you can you can probably you know chris i think you could probably guess the first two uh city park and audubon because okay. we don't like to think super hard 
about <laughs> what is going to meet everybody's needs. And generally, that's got what we're looking for. Um, yeah. But it's Thursday, and we're supposed to think of a new place that we're going to meet this Saturday. So uh, maybe you got any ideas? <laughs> We send out a, a reminder message on Thursdays, and um, we got to do that today. Yeah, there's um, there's Fountain Blue Park on the North Shore, and um, there is another uh, area. I, I forget. It, it, it's along the the river there. Um, there's like a levee berm kind of area where i've seen mm-hmm. people paint before and i can't think of okay. exactly where it is and then there's lakeside up in uh metairie area yeah. right there's that harbor there that's kind of fun i just haven't ever found a good view um in there and like you get lots of the looks like what are you doing over here <laughs> yeah super tempted to sneak into where all those boats are like um I don't know what the term is, but they're where they're all um, you know, out of the water. Anchored. What was that? Are are they, are they anchored out in the water, or are they just kind no, of? No, there's like a, there's kind of like a parking lot area where um, a lot of the boats are are um, like on trailer beds or like you know beached basically, um, and you can see the whole bottom of the boats and stuff. So it's it's kind of cool, uh, um, different. Yes. Dry dock. Uh, Is it dry dock? Is that the term? I don't know. Yeah, they call them boat yards in New England. Boat yards. Yeah, there's a boat yard there, but it's very gated, and you'd, I'd have to like just blatantly walk in there and hope nobody had said anything. Sure. Yeah. Um. My wife is overhearing our conversation, and she said, uh, "A cemetery. Cemetery would be cool. Definitely." Plenty of those that are open, and um, some yeah, I've definitely walked by one like in sunrise lighting, uh-huh. and uh, you know all those white tombs. I don't know what you call them. Um, they get some pretty cool like lavenders and then like bright yellows and stuff mm. like that. But yeah, that would be fun to do. Also, another place I haven't worked the nerve up to like go hang out and do that in. <laughs> Yeah, I I never did either. I, I went uh, one day, and I'm not sure exactly when. We might have been on, like, a tour. This mm-hmm. is before we actually uh, stayed in the area, or I started painting or anything. And we went to um, some cemetery, and it was so uncomfortably warm, and... <sighs> The sun was so intense that I don't know. I think I vowed to never go back, and I only went back to take photos in all uh-huh. the years that I was actually still uh, living around there. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it sounds like a good idea. I don't know. It 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 it. it Maybe it would uh, be photogenic, you know? Yeah, I mean, I've I've definitely the one that's like off, I think it's Britannia and Washington. Uh, I think it's St. Louis too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I think it's just been gated recently. I don't think they've been open since everything happened. Um, so I've just like walked the perimeter and tried to see if there's any view like into it that's worth doing, and mm-hmm. like just, just nothing I can find worth it. So. Huh. Definitely something I want to keep seeing is as a possibility, but I think it might have to be open for me to do something I want to in there. That can't makes find sense. something. Yeah, I just can't find something good enough from the outside. <sighs> okay. Now you're using gouache, and mm-hmm. thinking back to when I use gouache, this kind of thing would uh offer me a lot of very sp- specific challenges because mm-hmm. uh now that I'm used to using oil 
I can take and fudge a line and just scrape portions off and sure. in order to get that image. And you're dealing with paint that's going to be drying in layers that. here. <laughs> just, uh, just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, because a lot of my like training for learning how to paint was digital, uh, yeah. I feel like wash is one of the most like, I mean, you can do almost anything in digital, but it's got that layers quality that you kind mm -hmm. of like attribute to like a Photoshop painting and like the process, like the order that you have to do the process in. Yeah. Um, it's kind of the same puzzle mindset of starting a digital painting. Like how can you use the layers and like what order would be best to lay them down in. Yeah. So and I, enjoy it. I, I never did any of that, but the one thing I did do was paint Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. So <laughs> there's a definite order of operations the there. <laughs> how you go about thinking about like your base coat, you know, your highlights, where you're going to ink, and where you're going to dry brush. And I actually use more techniques I got out of White Dwarf magazine back in mm -hmm. the day for, uh, for Warhammer uh, mi miniature painting than I probably used from the magazines that are, you know, the modern... That's crazy periodicals you know that's great that's good that's cool that it was that helpful it's oh. definitely good to look into like a different you know a different realm yeah and, but similar similar medium so the thing like that made offer. it yeah the thing that made it so helpful and I, I would actually even go so far as to recommend some people who are stuck with um, their order of operations as they approach paintings, mm -hmm. either like water-based or oil, if they go and look at how three-dimensional miniatures are painted and how yep. the people who really know what they're doing approach painting essentially tiny sculptures um, and making them read from um you know from that scale i think it's infinitely helpful to have that in the back of your mind and when i work small i know that certain uh values and certain uh areas of color are going to uh pop out and they're going to catch someone's eye due to scale more. Right. And I think that's maybe why I was as successful as I was when I introduced my tiny, like, two inch by two inch and three inch by three inch mm -hmm. paintings at the night market back in 2012. It was because of, uh, of, some of that and of course i did that stuff when i was maybe like 14 to 16 but mm -hmm. it, it really helped actually and still to this day because you use a lot of dry brushing techniques in mm -hmm. order to glance over things like metal and stone and skin tone especially for green or purple skin for some of the monsters right the orcs and the ogres and stuff like that um it it sort of informs the way i do things in a really bizarre way that i, I kind of enjoy mm -hmm. I, i've never really actually heard anyone else speak about it either so I'm a little surprised by that. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, it's definitely something that um, has impacted you. And I'm sure it's not that uncommon a thing. I wonder if, I mean, there's got to be other people who have experienced that too. 
totally. But I mean, big world. <laughs> it, it it's a big world, and there are a lot of nerds out there. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, that reminds wow, me of so, um, the art school thing that we had to do. That seems super similar to that. Is like we were, we had to do something where it's like we were told to think about it in a way that like. You know, if you're on a freeway going 80 miles per hour and you only get to see this image for like, you know, three seconds, two seconds, or you just caught your eye and you didn't get to see it at all, like, you got to create something that's that graphic, that recognizable, that captures it. And mm -hmm. and sim simple is just going to be the only way to do that, you know? So I yeah. definitely, it's a good exercise, simplicity. Yeah, I, I think I... I encountered that notion in fine art schools as well. And I mean, it wasn't really framed in the same way, but I, I think it was like the same gist, you know, like um, what portion of your piece do you want mm -hmm. to have the most uh, immediate impact and interest first? Mm -hmm. yeah. and then you work down from there oh i'm going slow with my palette knife today and i actually think that it's working out for me i'm trying to yeah. keep it as small as i can mm-hmm and not go too crazy with it. Oh, I go crazy with this thing lately. The, with the palette knife? Yeah. What, what's the, what's an example of going crazy with the palette knife? Well, you know, I, I just decide uh, three minutes into a painting that I need to take a big piece of paint and just, you know, make a three inch by two inch uh, heavy mark. Oh, okay right in the beginning kind of impulsively mm -hmm. and it it i mean i i think it sounds easier when i describe it to imagine it working than <laughs> <laughs> no there's no way you got to be like that is that stuff so hard to be economical with like and not, oh, yeah. you know it's not going to count if it's everywhere so like yeah i get what you're saying it's not Simplicity looks simple. It's complicated. <laughs> yes. If there had to be a tagline for this video, you just made it, Steve. <laughs> Sweet. I nailed it. Simplicity, Simplicity right looks now. simple. <laughs> <laughs> so this group that you formed in New mm -hmm. Orleans that does the plein air paintings, now... Do you all just do your own thing? Is there uh, a discussion, a critique mm. of what's going on? Uh, what no, has... it's definitely, it's way more laid back than, than that. We, okay. yeah, um, it's, it's good though. It's like, um, it's a range of different levels, I, I'd say. And, um, and everybody's super willing to like share what they're, you know, what they're doing. They're excited to talk about what they're, you know, going to attempt that day and, um, it just feels Excellent. very, uh, yeah, it feels very, um, uh, like a study group almost, you know? Yeah. I would like to think that I could have possibly done something similar and made it work, but if I'm being a hundred percent kosher with you right now, no way. <laughs> <laughs> And why is that? It, 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 uh, it, it would have evolved into a num number of different uh, things because um, I would have dragged people from uh, not only the night market, but also various personalities from the French market mm -hmm. and from possibly um, other uh markets you know i i would have uh i would have probably not been so specific mm. to have um like a common goal like plein air <laughs> landscape painting yeah 
I, I would have tried to go real general to begin with. And I, I did actually try something, I think, once or twice like that. And I think um, Jackie showed up for one of them. So yeah. you, you can ask her how that went. I don't think <laughs> that a lot of work got accomplished, at least in my mind. I, I, I don't remember much actually happening <laughs> yeah jackie has shown up to one of ours so far as well i'm hoping it's more than one jackie, yeah if you're listening to this later yeah jackie i think uh <laughs> I, I i have a whole bunch of things i would really like to say to jackie directly right now so i mean yeah. it seems like a good place for it really that's what these videos are for i think yeah just Indirect calling out people that yeah, <laughs> calling out people that we know that other people aren't maybe aren't too familiar with, you know. I think people are always into that. Yeah, you know? <laughs> inside <laughs> conversations are what people generally like to listen to. Yeah, the less context, the better. <laughs> I mean, we're already muted at this point, are we not? Yes. <laughs> you think anybody's got the volume up right now? <laughs> uh, Aside yeah. from my friends that are going to be laughing at me while I'm watching this with them later. So. Yeah. In the future, we're yeah. the volume's up in that scene, scenario. <laughs> uh, There's talk of ooh. them trapping me with our first video to, like, where I don't know it's coming. Oh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. they they think they're going to make me watch it in some form or another it's not going to happen <laughs> just not doing it Chris what do you got what do you got oh you're doing good there you're fast you I understand fast. Um, yeah I'm I decided to because I'm working small try to condense some of the areas of light and actually allow uh that larger expanse on the top to take over more of the composition. So I'm kind of squishing it down a little. And of course I'm second guessing myself at this point because I think I had it better about 10 minutes ago. Oh, that's fun. That's my favorite feeling. Yeah. And I, I like how you've actually just gone ahead and, uh, put the red in and i have not had yeah i have not had the courage to do that quite yet let's see if it's my downfall um i'm mostly concerned about this patch of gray trees at the bottom that can be misconstrued as green oh well, there's green in there chris yeah oh i've already color picked that Nope, that's some good green. I mean, it's, I that, just, it's that kind of green that, like, black and yellow make. There's no real, there's no need yeah. for blue. But uh, it's definitely, like, a deep ochre, you know, gray, which just comes across as green. And therefore, there's green in my painting. I found a way. I am using a Zorn palette for this one today, so I'm not using any blue. I just have blue. the Payne's Gray, no, Payne's Gray, Magenta, Cad Deep, Cad Medium, White, and what is, it? it's like Sienna or something. So that's what I've decided to try to work with. I have the same as usual, but I've added the um, Opera Pink and Cad Yellow Deep as well. Oh, how how do you like Cad Yellow Deep? I, I feel that not a lot of people trust uh, Cad Yellow Deep. They're more likely to trust something that just comes out and says it's orange. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's it's got a weird name. Um, I don't know if you can really trust that color. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just thinking about that when I was, I was uh, looking through everything. I was like, shoot, I don't have any orange. Wait, I had yellow. 
What? I just, you know, I've never even given any thought to that other than today, and that's that's funny that you bring that up. <laughs> I get hung up on those kind of things uh, more often than I am willing to admit. <laughs> the, the names of colors? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't, like, you don't buy one in the store that you like because of its color? Yeah. Does it go that far? Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> well, uh, I. Are you going to justify it? I want to know how it's going to be justified. Yeah. Now I'm more likely to look at the actual pigments on the back because I have figured out. Um, if I'm going to try a new paint, then the pigment um, numbers have to be close or similar. Or if there's like a like a, a hue or uh, two or three different pigments in a single color, I need mm-hmm. to make sure that I'm already using all of them before I introduce it. Uh, so I, I don't go too crazy. And a lot of pieces that I feel just go run off the rails is when I try to get crafty with the colors I'm using. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the the more I stay to a super limited CMYK palette, I think uh, the more success I tend to have because I know how far I can push certain colors. Sure. And it's, that. It, like I, I think I've, um, I think I've memorized certain of the between pink and orange, red and violet, you know, colors that I'm really not too great with. I think mm-hmm. I, I feel more confident using that range um, if I have the base uh, colors that I'm familiar with. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I, on the other hand, though, am just somebody who learned painting digitally, so I had the full rainbow wheel there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're not going to take any colors from my palette, Chris. It's just not going to happen. I want every option. The more, the better. So, you are still doing, like, plein air landscape painting from a color wheel palette. You don't do any kind of okay because I don't really I don't limit myself too much. I mean I obviously for like money reasons I don't buy every color there is. So I I do structure it to be a, like the primaries and then I give myself a couple like bonus colors where like a dark brown uh, and then that's where like the you know that neon pink comes in and um, and the orange. Um, but yeah, I mean, I honestly, yeah, I, I would prefer to have a huge range of of color, and then in in my head, I think, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna simplify on the canvas. I'm not going to let myself go crazy. That doesn't always go that, that way, though. So I see what I see where you're coming from as well. I I hear that. Yep. There's always uh, there's always something crafty that pops up in my head every time I begin a new piece. Like, you know what? I bet I can do this. <laughs> Maybe I should try this. Maybe I'm at the point where I can pull this off. Nah. <laughs> nah. Oh. But you gotta keep trying or you'll never know. You can never have enough failure in your life, honestly. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You you may have said that as if you're saying it in jest, but <laughs> I I, yeah, I believe I that to be true. I do too. You just have to. You can't get too comfortable. Uh Nope. I am secretly a little paranoid that 
if I um, let myself paint uh, mountains or waterfalls <laughs> or <laughs> um, <laughs> certain uh, kind of river areas uh -huh. that suddenly uh, without me knowing it I'm going to start uh, kind of appearing like some of the work that I look at and mm -hmm. think to myself ooh oh, that's it's a little much and that's one thing that I, I don't want to that's one way I don't want to feel about my own work. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, I really am concerned some days. You know, I, I look at things and I'm like, Chris, that, that's a little much. And you don't, you don't want it to be too pretty. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Uh, yeah. I, I think I can deal with a certain amount of, prettiness in a uh -huh. piece but then yeah. there just has to be a little bit of punk rock a little bit of interest sure. uh that's generated in unusual ways there has to be a few rules broken and um a few imperfections that are purposefully left i can get behind that there's definitely a, there's a sliding scale between us on this matter, but in general, <laughs> I agree with you. Excellent. <laughs> That's why I keep wanting to have you on, Steve, because <laughs> it, it's great to just have a painting echo chamber. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think the more times you have me on, it will be less of an echo chamber. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I think you want me on because you know at some point I, I'm just gonna literally call you stupid. Like this might happen. <laughs> I think you could get the sense of my bluntness somewhere in here. Oh, looking forward to it, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, Chris, <laughs> that, that looks absolutely terrible. You, should, you sure you don't want to start over? <laughs> you. Yes. You probably should have, um, out of compassion, stopped me when I had a limited palette and was in a 100-degree car, had the brilliant <laughs> idea to try to paint an entirely green reference photo, like mustard color. <laughs> yeah. Um, I may have gotten some satisfaction out of it. I, to be fair, I was like, Chris, this looks really uncomfortable. How are you doing there, buddy? Um, but I wasn't going to stop you from pushing yourself along. Ooh. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really had thought that it might be, it might have a higher entertainment value to oh, see um, someone crash and burn that bad, but... Yeah, it, it turns out that as soon as people started to see me sort of go downhill, and uh -huh. I, I, I said it in the video, I think that's when they stopped watching the video. Like, oh, well, even he Oh, he's got I'm a doing. point. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Nothing more to see here. Oh, my God. This is funny. So, um, I never really posted videos or anything is that something that you're able to gauge uh where people drop off the video uh yeah i, I just discovered that a few weeks back that you can uh it, it's one of the metrics you, you see how long oh, people God. are engaged in the video and where they tend to uh drop off or switch to another video and how well, that long sounds they... super helpful but also super oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just take it lightly I, I guess. <laughs> because some people will watch the entire video all the way through mm -hmm. and and there'll be a high percentage 
with certain mm-hmm. pieces, with certain um, videos I post of these dual paint cast things. And other times people will watch literally like two minutes. Be like, oh, I'm done. I and wonder, um, what do you think is there something I said? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, what I'm wondering is, what does it do with the people like me, who I probably watch like a minute or two, and then swipe to see what the ending looks like? Yeah. Do you think that's um, not counting those people, or do you think it is counting those people as finished viewers? It, it, it's hard to tell. I, I think mm-hmm. I would have to actually um, research that. Yeah. I and think, see I if, if there is... Out a way to find that out but it, it's also a rabbit hole to go down too. like how how <laughs> many i i don't have time for that many rabbit holes like i i go down enough i mm-hmm. having uh kind of like an addictive personality for things um i i tend to be um distracted by way too many things on a daily basis you know so you gotta kind of be cautious with what you actually go into definitely (laughs) and uh, i i still convince myself that at the end of the day at night i'll be able to research something or look into it um it, it it really doesn't work that way i end up just falling asleep almost immediately And then, yeah, nothing comes of it. <laughs> it's quite so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have to be careful. Okay, so I'm tr- I'm trying to get the right color just above the sun here, and. I am missing it, really. Hey, is there a little green up there, though? Did you go a little green? Or is that just the pink making it look green? I think it's the pink making it look green. I think okay. it's um, it's sort of like a... I don't know. It, it's hard to describe. Um, it's the color of, like, mid-90s luxury interior. <laughs> For um, for American made cars, it's you know it, it could be taupe, it could be like <sighs> tan or gray. It's, it's oh, really... why is that such a descriptive way to? <laughs> well, now I know I... exactly what color you're talking about. That's yeah, weird that, that works that way. Yeah, everyone references colors in different ways. I, I hear some people speak of flowers. Where they'll talk about what a ripe piece of fruit is. And with me, it's, you know, car interiors, uh, packaging for 1980s cereals. Um, you know, I, I think it gives you a little bit of interesting insight into a person and their yeah. life experience, how, how they reference color. Mm-hmm. And I, w- I will say, I- I've mentioned this, I don't know, with you, but definitely on another podcast or, or another, yes, something somewhere about how I'm obsessed with the colors from the Five Alive container. They used to be this uh, kind of citrus, fake orange juice drink that was absolutely chock full of sugar that huh. my mother used to get for my brother and I in the early to mid 80s it was called Five Alive I think they still made it up until the early 2000s I have not seen it since um, and the container was a very <laughs> specific color blue and then it had like the citrus fruit colors, and there was kind of. Um, I, I I googled it, but you know, for the people listening. Oh, I don't know oh, what it looks like. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't recognize. This I, at I remember. 
No. No. No, I've never yeah. seen that before. Maybe it's a like a New England thing. Then, where yeah, did you grow up again? Uh, California, the the Bay Area. Oh yeah, you you probably have a lot higher quality citrus beverages in the Bay Area <laughs> back in the nineties, right? I mean, we got Minute Maid. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't ever become a citrus drink connoisseur. <laughs> Maybe that's the yeah. Southern California thing you're thinking. Of. Maybe. I, I think it the was the fact that... Down there. Yeah, I, I don't think I really uh, like to drink just straight orange juice. And <laughs> you needed to I, be an I, orange I, drink. Yeah. It, it was like a funny thing where I needed to have like a fake citrus flavored drink. I mean, I, I I never got as far as to drink the the Kool Aids that were that kind of mm-hmm. came in all those super unnatural colors, and I mean, uh, Tang. Did you like Tang? No, I I, I there was a neighbor kid. I I, I grew up in um, Connecticut, just outside of Hartford, and we had a neighbor, and he and his family were from Florida, I think. I think both of his parents were from Florida. And they used to have their kids drink all sorts of tang and some other kind of... um, It was like a bluish... It wasn't Powerade, but it was blue back before things were... People were comfortable with things being blue. And I, I remember them drinking blue things. And, yeah, my parents thought it was a little funny. And, of course, that kind of uh, bled over into my opinions and uh, making opinions as an adult. Uh-huh. I mean, you're not an opinionated adult, though, are you? I don't think so. I think no. I'm... Way too attached to uh, having a lack of opinions, generally. Mm-hmm. I, I think it uh, it makes for more interesting conversation when you can just always say, "Oh, I, I have no idea. I, I don't know. <laughs> I've never done that. I know nothing about that." Or you can give an uh, an anecdote that is. Um, self depreciating enough, you know, that <laughs> it uh, it kind of endears you to people. Like, oh, he really has no ego, does he? <laughs> oh. How is yours doing? What do you got? I can't know. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, I am sticking a lot more to the CAD Deep. I'm trying to base this all around having CAD Deep. And I feel that your super intense red is uh, kind of guiding yours more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I really like it. I think that uh, I think that makes the violet in your cloud uh, pretty believable. Thanks. Yeah, I kind of wanted to do uh, I think that red I wonder, I don't, it's one of those things where it's like, it's kind of vibrating to my eye. I wonder, like the red looks a lot lighter, but I'm thinking maybe it's darker than it. It's closer to that gray-blue I got next to it uh, Mm -hmm. than I think just because it's so saturated. Uh, we'll see. I was. Do you do that? Do you take photos of your stuff and then turn it black and white? Uh, I think someone recommended I do that years ago, and I did it once, and it mm-hmm. worked. And I probably just forgot all about it. Yeah, it's helpful for checking out the values. Yes, I I tend to squint a lot, and that's why. I have 
such well this is why this is my theory of why I have all the lines around my eyes it's not due to natural aging it's due to the discerning squinting I do in most situations and I have pretty strong vision I think mm-hmm. I'm still 2015, 2010, mm-hmm. which is better than 2020 in both of my eyes. Um, I'm just constantly squinting, thinking that it's going to work for color. And mm. basically, it just informs me for value changes. Um, yeah. That's what I've always heard. It's it's squinting, uh, squinting for color, and then um, uh, I'm, I mean squinting for values. Um, I still think it does something. I'm not com- completely convinced it doesn't help in some way. But um, I think the most important thing that you can do is to like let your eyes kind of dart around and like flip back and forth to compare things, um, and not just be looking at what it looks like next to what it's next to. You know? Yes. Uh, I have, I don't think I've said this too often, but people ask me, um, and I I get super annoyed at this question, but I I understand it. And I keep on giving kind of really, uh, I don't, I don't want to say angered, but it's definitely, um, a a mismatched response to the energy mm-hmm. that comes into it. Mm-hmm. They ask me about um, wait, I, I'm, I'm mixing color now. I just forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> what were we just talking about? Seriously, I, I, I like I've not been drinking today either. I, 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 no, that's I just had coffee. Yeah. What were we just talking about? I just was like focusing <laughs> on my moving stuff around on my palate, and I lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, we're talking about uh, squinting and 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 seeing color and value. Oh, yes, but I had something. You're gonna rewind that and find out that I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, I, I had we something. We can cut this part out, though, right? That's good. the thing. No, of oh. course not. <laughs> Why would you cut out anything where I I look bad? I'm I'm supposed to be the host. I don't think I'm gonna look good in this. <laughs> no, Steve, You're... help! What we're we talking about? <laughs> You're doing fine. <laughs> oh, this is good. our. Um, we were talking way, about squinting. Just talking about who, the wrinkles on your face. <laughs> yeah. For people who don't know, this is our third video now, and only <laughs> one was able to actually be published. Um, <laughs> so. I don't think yeah. we can be trusted. No. Uh, yeah, I, I was I was gonna say something about a common question I get, and now right. I totally oh, forgot the common go. question. Hey, no, you get like the wrong tone when answering a question, but you never told me what the question was, so I kind of lost track of it. Yeah, because I, I was doing something on my palate. Yeah. Oh. See, now it's driving me crazy. I have no idea what I was going to oh, say. Oh, still? Shit. I, I, I should, but I don't. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we won't maybe, in a, maybe in a subsequent video, I'll be like, oh, yeah. Remember last time we were talking? Well, here you go. Um, yeah, but, I mean... Realistically, the likelihood of that is rather low as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Wow.